Betsy's Kindergarten Adventures. Let's go to my house and see what will float away on our balloons. Kevin, he was right here. He must have floated away. This is not good. Does anyone know what to do if they see a fire? Look, a fire! What do we do? Driver Bob. Well, hello, Billy. Wow, you're a giant, Bus Driver Bob. A giant? Oh, <laughs> that's because you're looking at me through your binoculars. <laughs> I know. Aren't my new binoculars cool? I can see really far away with them. Uh huh. And everything near you looks really big, huh? <laughs> yeah. I'll never forget the day that my baby brother nearly floated away. Whoa! <laughs> it all started with a lesson Mrs. O taught to the class. How many of you have ever lost a helium balloon? I have My dad bought me a balloon at the circus last year, and I accidentally let go of it. And what happened, Betsy? It floated way up to the top of the tent. Even the clown on stilts couldn't reach it. Do you know why your balloon floated away? Um, not really. We all know that a rock is more dense than air, right? Wait, what's dense? I was hoping you would ask that, Billy. You see, everything is made up of little tiny pieces called molecules. A rock has many more of these tiny pieces than the air does. We call that density. And a rock has a greater density than the air. So the rock falls to the ground when you drop it. A rock is also more dense than water. So if I drop this rock into water, it will sink to the bottom. This rubber ball is filled with air, and air is less dense than water, so when I drop it in the water, it floats to the top. Does everybody understand? What does this have to do with balloons? Well, if you fill a balloon with rocks, it will sink to the ground. If you fill another balloon with air, it will seem to float for a moment, but it won't float away. The balloon is just as dense as the air around it. This tank is filled with helium. Helium is a gas that is actually less dense than the air that surrounds us. So if you fill a balloon with helium, the helium will float through the air the same way that rubber ball floated to the top of the water earlier. And the balloon will float away. That's right, Betsy. Just like your balloon at the circus. Eventually, the helium will leak out and the balloon will return to the ground. I'm gonna give you all some helium-filled balloons this afternoon so that you can do some testing of your own. Let's go to my house and see what will float away on our balloons. I bet we could make a whole car float away with all these balloons. Bus driver Bob, you think the bus will float away with all these balloons inside? I think the bus should be just fine. I'm not sure if there will be room for you kids in here, though. Sure is a blue day out there today. Really? It's awfully pink out over here. 
<laughs> I think you are both wrong. It's completely green out today. Are we almost home, bus driver Bob? Just a few more minutes, Betsy. we can see how much weight a balloon can take. There it goes! Wow, it's really going fast. I bet this stick is a lot heavier than that pencil. Oh, man. There goes another balloon. Nothing. Uh, maybe we should start with the heavy stuff and work our way down. Our experiments might last a little bit longer that way. Hey, if we tied all our balloons together, maybe we can get something really heavy to float away. How are the experiments going, kids? So far, the balloons are winning. <laughs> it looks like Kevin really likes balloons. <laughs> Betsy, do you think you and your friends could spare a balloon for Kevin to play with? Um, sure. But we need it back for our experiment. <laughs> oh, Betsy, your brother is so cute. Betsy, keep an eye on Kevin for me. I'll be right inside. Okay, Mom. Okay, let's start with this rock. I tied the balloon to the rock and... Nothing happens. But not the most exciting experiment. <laughs> Do you like that balloon, Kevin? Look, everyone. The balloon is taking that pine cone. Let's see if we can follow it. Here, Kevin. Hold on to these for a second, will you? <laughs> Looks like they left you to play by yourself, Kevin. Betsy has a long time before we let her babysit, huh? One more balloon gone. I guess that pine cone wasn't enough after all. Maybe if we tied all of my balloons to it, it would have... Oh, no! What's wrong, Betsy? Kevin! He was right here. I handed him my balloons. You handed him all your balloons? At once? I didn't realize. He's just a baby. He's so light. And all those balloons. He must have floated away. Oh, no. This is not good. We've got to find him before my mom finds out he's missing. I think I see some balloons way up there, but I can't really tell. That can't be Kevin. He couldn't have floated up there that fast. How do you know? What if it is him? How will I ever find him? How will my mother ever forgive me? Betsy will find Kevin. All we have to do is release more balloons and see where the wind takes them. Great idea. All we need are a lot of balloons and another baby. There we go, ready for launch. Let it go, and I'll watch exactly where it goes. Wherever the balloon goes, that's where Kevin went. Here goes nothing! Great. Kevin's gone forever. Kevin is heavier than a stick. I think we need to try this again. Keep an eye 
on the log. It's going where Kevin went. Bon voyage, balloon! That can't be good. Let's try one more test. This ought to do it. Let's say this doll is Kevin and these balloons are Betsy's balloons. Here we go. Um, I'm not sure what just happened. Okay, the balloons and Kevin floated away. But why didn't the doll float away? How are we going to chase after Kevin and bring him back? We need to plan a rescue. Wait a minute, Bitsy. Does that doll feel heavier than your brother Kevin? No. I've got our rescue plan. Now, exactly how is this going to work? I get in the chair. We untie the rocks and I float up to where Kevin is. I grab him, let the helium out of the balloons, and come down. So let me get this straight. First, you're going to float out of here. You don't really know how far up you'll float. You may go all the way up to space. Somehow you'll find Kevin out there. <laughs> You'll grab him. You'll let the air out of the balloons. And you'll fall gently to the ground. <laughs> and you really think that will work? It looks good on paper. Wait a second. Betsy said that the doll felt lighter than Kevin. Yes? So, if Kevin is heavier than the doll, and the same amount of balloons couldn't carry the doll away, I'm not so sure that Kevin floated anywhere. I hope you're not thinking of floating away with my lawn chair. Mom? Kevin! You act like you haven't seen him for months, Betsy. It's just... well, I thought... Are you sure it's okay for him to play with balloons, Mom? He's not the one trying to make a lawn chair disappear. We were prepared to rescue him! You would need a lot more balloons to get off the ground, Kenji. I think you actually weigh more than the helium. And Betsy, the next time you think there is a serious problem, please go get an adult before you try to solve the problem. But I just didn't want you to think I couldn't watch Kevin on my own. Fortunately, I was keeping my eye on Kevin through the window just to make sure that he was okay. We have a few more years before you can really watch Kevin by yourself. I think I'd rather wait. So, the helium balloon wasn't quite enough to make Kevin or Kenji float away. But it was fun to learn about density in helium balloons. One of the things I really like about kindergarten is that you never know what to expect each day. are fun, but I like school better. Okay, you two, that's enough noise. Thank you, that's better. Now, why don't you two play quietly, okay? I'm sure you and Gracie can both think of a lot of fun things to do that aren't so loud. Hmm? Kevin? 
Oh, no! Oh, no, 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 Gracie! Mom, have you seen my fireman's hat? Oh, here it is. Okay, I'm ready for school. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, bus driver Bob. Hello, bus driver Bob. Betsy, I see you're ready for your field trip to the firehouse today. Say, do you know why firemen wear red suspenders? <laughs> to keep their pants up. Oh, you've heard that joke before, eh? Uh-huh. <laughs> Today is going to be an exciting day. Mrs. O'Connor is taking us to a real firehouse, and we're going to meet real firefighters. Hi, bus driver Bob. Hello, Newton. Say, Newton, do you know why firemen wear red suspenders? Sure, to keep their pants up. Oh, I guess you've heard that joke too. Oh yeah, my big brother told me that joke at breakfast this morning. Uh, oh. Hi, Betsy. Hi, Newton. I see you have your fireman's hat on, too. Uh-huh. This is gonna be a great field trip. Good morning, everyone. Hi, Hi bus driver Bob. Bob! Say, do any of you kids know why... To keep the pants up! <sighs> I've got to get some new jokes. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Mrs. O'Connor. So is everybody ready for our field trip to a real firehouse? Yes! All right, then. Everyone get in the line and follow me. Hold hands and stay together. I've never been to a real firehouse before. Me neither. That's right, everyone stay close together. I love field trips, but I think the best thing about this field trip is that we can walk to it. The firehouse is right next door to Lakeshore School. Good morning, Mrs. O'Connor. Hello, Chief. Class, this is my very good friend, Fire Chief Amanda Blaze. Good morning, children, and welcome to Lakeshore Engine Company number three. Good, good morning, morning, Chief Blaze. Now then, does anybody know what a firefighter does? Put out fires? That's right, we put out fires. Does anyone know what to do if they see a fire? You dial 911. Right again! Does anybody know how to make a 911 call? You push the numbers 911 on the telephone keypad and wait for someone to answer. Then you give them your name and address and tell them where the fire or emergency is. And you stay on the phone for instructions. Very good! Now, I'm sure you have fire drills at school. I'm glad to hear that, but I'm curious. Does anybody practice fire drills at home? My mom and dad and I practice fire drills at home. You do? That's great! We practice finding our way out of our house in case of a fire. My bedroom is on the second floor of our house, so I have a special rope ladder in my bedroom that I can only use in case of a real fire or during one of our family fire drills. Our special place to meet up during a fire is the mailbox in our front yard. That's very good. Every family should have an exit plan in case of a home fire and practice it regularly. Now then, who wants to see the rest of the firehouse? Me! <laughs> well then, follow me. Wow. Look at all the beds. Do you all live here? Not exactly, but firefighters have to be ready to go day or night. We have a kitchen too, and we all take turns cooking. 
But we always have to be ready to leave at a moment's notice when we hear the alarm bell. This is the quickest way down. Wow! Come on, everyone. Let's take the stairs down. It's just like the pool on the jungle gym at the playground. You too, Billy. That pole is for firefighters only. Ooh, some of this equipment sure looks scary. Our equipment may look strange, but it's all to keep you safe. So, if you ever see someone dressed like this, don't be afraid. <gasps> it's just a firefighter doing his or her job. Wow! He looks like an alien from outer space. <laughs> <laughs> All that equipment is to protect the firefighter from the heat and smoke of a fire and to make sure that you and your family are safe, too. But the fire department does more than just fight fires. That's right. Emergency medical service workers are also on duty if you're ever hurt and need help right away. Ooh. <gasps> Can any of you think of some ways to keep safe from fires? Never play with matches! That's right! Never put anything over a lamp like clothes or blankets. Very good answers! I want to thank you for visiting us today and for being such good listeners. I hope you all learned something about fire safety today. I know I did. Therefore, it is my pleasure as Chief of Lakeshore Engine Company Number 3 to grant you all the title of Junior Firefighters. <gasps> the real fire chief is giving us special badges and making us Junior Firefighters. I don't think anything could be better than this. Hey, Betsy! The firefighters are letting us climb on the fire engines! Really? Uh-huh! <laughs> a chance to climb onto a real fire engine? This had to be the best field trip ever. Newton, Molly, and Maria took a closer look at the paramedic van. It's like a first aid hospital inside a van. The people who drive it are called paramedics. And Maria helped out by pretending to be a patient. Chief Blaze even showed Billy and me the inside of a really big fire engine. This switch operates the ladder, and this switch over here turns on the lights. What does this switch do? Billy, don't! That switch turns on the siren. Oops, sorry. Okay, everyone, it's about time we headed back to school. <sighs> I'm afraid so. I've had as much fun here today as you have. Let's all thank Chief Blaze for showing us around today. Thank you, Chief Blaze! It was my pleasure, and remember, fire safety begins with you. Okay, Junior Firefighters, get into a nice straight line and follow me back to Lakeshore School. Hmm. When was the last time you changed the oil on this old jalopy? Change the oil? Well, I've been very busy lately, and... Well, when was your last tune-up? Tune-up? Oh, my. Well, I have to say that it's been, uh... <laughs> uh-huh. Well, I'll just make a slight adjustment, but it may cause a lot of smoke. Well, that's fine with me, bus driver Bob, just as long as it starts. Stay calm, everyone. 
I think I'm going to faint. Oh, please! We need to call the fire department. Look, the fire alarm. Quick, get me over to the fire alarm, Billy. Wow, take it easy. Ouch, hey, hey, don't cover my eyes. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Pumper number two, get over to Lakeshore School. Paramedics, you better follow in case of any injuries. Let's go, people. Great Scott, is my car on fire? No, sir. Your car engine is just making way too much smoke. <laughs> That's all. <coughs> oh, thank goodness. Because I thought I heard a fire engine. <laughs> a fire engine? <laughs> Don't be silly. <laughs> oh, my. Is everything all right over here? We got a call that there was a fire. Fire? Fire? There was no fire. Mrs. O'Connor, who called the fire department? It was me, Principal Warner. But I thought it was a real fire. Honest. We all did, Principal Warner. Sounding a false alarm is a very serious offense, young lady. You're absolutely right, Principal Warner. However, this young lady is a hero. She certainly is. What? I am? You saw smoke and thought someone was in danger. There may not have been a fire this time, but your quick thinking could save lives and property next time. So, you really did the right thing. I'm very proud of you, Betsy. We all are! <laughs> oh, good grief. <laughs> <laughs>